Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the first big hearing aid launch of 2025, and that is the Resound Vivia. Resound Vivia will be the brand's new flagship product replacing Resound Nexia. And if you don't know Resound, Resound is one of the largest manufacturers of hearing aids in the world. They're based in Denmark. And for me, I have a personal connection to the brand because it's the first prescription product that I ever tried when I first started wearing hearing aids. So I'm always excited to see the generations as they roll out and the improvements that the brand is making in their core technology. The Vivia had some really interesting features on board, including a second chip, which is dedicated to artificial intelligence. That's the first time AI has been on board a Resound hearing aid, and it's one of the first hearing aids in the world to do this. There are just a couple others on the market at this time. We'll talk about everything from that artificial intelligence chip to battery life, streaming, and even the external design. If we have not yet met, my name is Blake Cadwell. I'm a hearing aid wearer. I have worn over 50 pairs of hearing aids in the last year. I'm always on the hunt for the best technologies and to understand where the hearing tech space is going. I bring those reviews here to this channel. If you like what you see here today, I'd love it if you'd give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps us reach more people. With that, let's get into it. <music> Okay, so if you've watched our videos before, you might know that I often like to work my way from the outside in, starting with design, working into streaming and Bluetooth, and then finally talk about sound processing. But in this video, we're actually going to reverse that process. We're gonna start on the inside of the Resound Vivia, and then we're going to work our way out. The big reason for that is that Resound Vivia looks a lot the same on the outside, and it's actually a really big victory for Resound. We'll talk about why that is in just a minute, but it's the inside of Vivia that's really changed the most. And the biggest change that they've made is they've added a second processing chip, which I'll tell you all about in just a second. But before I do, let me just give you a quick sense of how hearing aid tech works in early 2025. Now, for the most part, hearing aids on the market all behave in similar ways. Some of them are better and some of them are worse, but they're all trying to do the same thing. They're trying to grab speech sounds, turn down background noise, and present you with those speech sounds at a louder level, so you have better understanding. Obviously, if they turned all sound up, that would be pretty simple. There are products on Amazon that do that for $99, but in general, you don't get any clarity and you're not really supported in a background noise situation. So hearing aid brands are constantly trying to figure out how can I get speech to be clearer and background noise to be lower, but keep the experience natural. So that for example, if a waiter comes up behind me when I'm at a restaurant, I'm not completely blocked out from that sound and only focused on the person in front of me. The way that most modern hearing aids do this is that they have hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of sub variants, little moves that they can make based on what they're hearing in their environment. Think of this as sort of an algorithm. It's a pre-baked calculation on when I hear a loud noise, this is how I respond. When I hear a voice, this is how I respond. When I hear a sound from a certain direction, this is how I open open up my microphones. When I hear a reverberation, I assume I'm in a large room and I make some adjustments based on that. All of this technology together is quite intelligent and works really well for some folks. But still, there are a lot of people who complain that in a loud background noise environment, it's hard to get clear signal and clear speech for the person that you actually want to hear. So over the last year, a couple of manufacturers have started to experiment with something new, and that is adding a dedicated chip which is just focused on artificial intelligence. That artificial intelligence chip is focused on finding human speech in the environment, cleaning it up, and then presenting it to your ears so that you can actually understand conversation as it happens around you. Now, if you've been following the hearing health market, it's possible that you saw the Phonak Sphere Infineo, which uses a similar concept, two onboard chips, one to clean up sound, one to manage everything else. Last week, I had a chance to sit down with the Resound team to better understand exactly how they approached this challenge and how they're bringing artificial intelligence into their hearing aids. And this is how they described it to me. They said that the dedicated chip has been trained on 13.5 million sentences of speech. So they collected speech from all over the world, children's voices, adults' voices, men's voices, women's voices at all different volumes. Some people shouting, some people whispering, and they feed them all through their own AI chip. Ultimately, they're training the AI on what's speech and what's noise. Then they turn on that AI chip inside your hearing aids so it can use all the intelligence and all the experience that it's gathered over these 13.5 million sentences and ultimately pick out what's speech in the environment and what's noise. Then the chip cleans up that sound and it works with the main hearing aid chip, which uses beamforming technology to sense 
your head movements, and decide which direction you are probably focusing. So now you can imagine the AI chip has cleaned up all the voices around you, detected all the voices around you, but it still might not know which voice you want to listen to. For example, when I'm walking around with my three-year-old daughter, she's fairly low and she's off to my side. If I'm walking by someone who's also talking, my hearing aids may think that I want to hear that voice, but in general, I want to hear the voice of my daughter. So the resound hearing aids are using beam forming to detect the movements of my head as I look down at my daughter, and they're determining that I want sound from down here. Now they use that cleaned up AI sound and they bring that into my ears. Ideally, this is giving me a bump in clarity and overall my ability to manage a background noise situation. Now, it's worth noting that I have not extensively tested this technology. So I'll be back in a month and I'm going to give you my honest review on how all of this actually works. You can subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that video later on. But in general, the promise, the kind of construct of how they're thinking about this makes a lot of sense to me because I'm not only interested in clean sound. I want clean sound, of course, that's more comfortable, sounds better overall, but I need the right clean sound. And so Resound's approach of combining beamforming with artificial intelligence, to me, is a pretty exciting proposition. All right, so that gives you some idea of what's happening on the inside of these devices, but let's now move outward just a little bit and talk about battery life. Battery life is one of the big blockers of artificial intelligence fully operating inside of our hearing aids. The reason is that artificial intelligence is very power hungry. It wants to drain your battery very quickly. And so often, if you put a powerful AI model inside of your hearing aids, the battery just drains too quickly. What's really impressive to me is that Resound Vivia has 30 hours of battery life on a single charge. And they did a bunch of experiments and said, if you run the AI system for six or seven hours a day, you'll get 20 hours of daytime battery life before you put your hearing aids back in your charger. Typically that's plenty for most folks. Now to manage that battery life, Resound puts you in control of when you use their intelligent focus feature, which is what they call their AI feature throughout the day. So you can either tap on a button on the hearing aid, you can change it via your app and go into intelligent focus. If you ran intelligent focus straight through the whole day, your hearing aids probably wouldn't make it through the full day. That's true of other competitors on the market as well. But in general, you could move it into intelligent focus when you're in tougher situations and then move it out if you're just at home or you're by yourself or you're in a quieter environment. Now what I would expect is that for Resound and for any other competitor on the market, this need to toggle in and out of AI modes to save battery, it's probably something we're only going to be dealing with for maybe the next three to five years. Battery tech is improving quickly and AI models are getting more efficient. Eventually, I would imagine that AI will always be running inside of our hearing aids and reprocessing the sound around us. And that is a pretty exciting future for anyone who cares about hearing tech for the long term. All that said, the bottom line here is that Resound Vivia should last you through a full day of wear from 20 to 30 hours before you put them back in the charger. All right, so that's battery life. Now let's talk about Bluetooth streaming. Resound has been one of the biggest proponents of the Bluetooth low energy audio protocol. In fact, they worked with the Bluetooth organization to help co-design this protocol. And they're also the only hearing aid on the market that has the Orcast capabilities turned on. Now we've talked all about Bluetooth low energy audio and AuraCast in a separate video, which I'll link up here. But what you need to know is that over the next two to five years, we expect more public spaces will stream audio directly into our devices using a protocol called AuraCast, and that will include hearing aids. Resound lets you already do that for places where AuraCast is available. There are certain places around the country, it's a bit rare, but you can in some cases, certain airports or houses of worship, where you can directly stream into your hearing aids via this new Bluetooth protocol. All right, finally, let's talk about design. This is one of the points that the Resound team is clearly the proudest of in what they've pulled off with this new generation. Instead of making their hearing aid bigger, which seemed to be the standard for artificial intelligence powered hearing aids, because you're having to add a second chip and probably a larger battery, somehow Resound Vivia is the same micro receiver and canal hearing aid that was available through Nexia. The size is actually the same and it's one of the smallest hearing aids on the market regardless of technology. So AI aside, it's really impressive what they've done. They kept saying it's artificial intelligence with no compromises and I tend to agree. It's a small hearing aid, long battery life and has the promise of really advanced artificial intelligence. It's pretty exciting. All right, a couple other things you might wanna know. 
This product will roll out in a few form factors at first. That will be the micro receiver and canal rechargeable device. That's the standard product that sits behind your ears. It'll also roll out in two non-rechargeable versions. So if you like to use disposable batteries, there will be an option for you. And they're also going to bring out a cross version, which sends sound from one side to the other for folks who have single-sided deafness. That will all roll out right at the launch of Resound Vivia at the end of February. We assume some of this technology may roll out to other parts of the Resound line, including BTEs and in-ear devices at some point in the future. So what are my overall thoughts on this launch? First of all, I'll save my actual review for after I've worn the product for about a month. I'm gonna bring that video back here to the channel in about a month or so, and I'll talk to you about how it's actually working. Is the second AI chip actually performing better than Nexia? Am I seeing a marked difference? Is the beam forming and the directionality all working in the way that it's promised? It'd be really interesting to see how this goes. So I'll save all of that for later. But in general, the news itself seems like a confirmation that hearing aid manufacturers, at least the most innovative ones, are all going to begin pushing towards onboard artificial intelligence. And to me, it's one of the most exciting jumps that we've seen in the hearing tech space in a really long time. Because what will naturally happen is that these chips will get smarter, more efficient, more powerful. And that means that eventually, maybe not even that long from now, hearing aids may actually augment our ability to hear. Folks like myself who wear hearing aids may be hearing better and clearer and smoother sound than folks who do not wear hearing aids. That's a future that I've long thought about and been excited about, but I can imagine that future coming quicker as I start to see artificial intelligence being built into products like this. As I've talked about on this channel before, I also get excited about more novel features, like the ability to program into the hearing aids directly the sound of my daughter's voice, my wife's voice, my close friend's voices, maybe give their voices just a little boost in the overall sound environment so I can really hear them clearly. It seems like something we might not be that far away from and something that could be really, really important to me and many other folks like me who wear hearing aids. So all that said, I'm very excited. I'll report back with more after I have worn the hearing aids for longer and I wish you the best in your research.